Hey guys, my name is Lam, and as this is the first video I'm doing about FS2020, let me introduce myself really quick. I'm a flight sim enthusiast, been flying ever since uh, Century of Flight came out in 2004, grew to FSX and jumped on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 as soon as I could. Um, I even uh, have taken a couple of real life lessons just to uh, get a feel for how an aircraft handles in real life. And that is enough about that. Um, what we're going to talk about here is my low-end PC. And this low-end PC, um, well, as soon as Flights in 2020 came out, I had nothing but CTDs or crashes to desktop been able to solve them and now I'm going to show you how to be able to fly safely on VATSIM network in VATSIM 2020 on a low spec computer. Now, as you can see here, you know, these are my specs and they are not exactly the greatest. So uh, what I'm doing as soon as I've started up uh, FS2020 is a couple of tweaks to make sure I don't get any of the CTDs. There are also a lot of starting uh, new pilots that have a uh, problem figuring out the G1000 systems, uh, especially altitude. So we're going to look into that right after uh, we have solved the CTDs. Let's get going. All right, here we are. Uh, Flight Sim has loaded. And one of the things I did before I even installed Flight Sim 2020 is increase my uh, virtual memory for the disk on which it is installed, which in my case is uh, D, Delta. And I added uh, 32,000 MBs of uh, virtual memory. And that helps a lot to start with. Then, as soon as Flight Simulator uh, has loaded, as it is uh, right now, what I have to do is open up the Task Manager, go to the tab Details, find Flight Sim 2020, here it is, flightsimulator.exe, and set the priority. As soon as I set the priority to low, all other uh, processes will get a priority over Flight Simulator and it helps uh, Windows not getting choked. Second thing I do is set the affinity. Now, as you can see I have six processors and currently all of them are in use. However, Windows uses processor zero. When I take that off, processor zero is uh, used primarily and actually only for Windows because there is nothing else running at the moment. So Flight Simulator will uh, use processor 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. Alright, that has been done. Now, when you have uh, uh, installed Flight Simulator on a low spec machine for the first time, you want to go to the options. Because the options, there's a few tweaks in there, especially here in general. Now, I'm uh, running a custom thingy. Because I'm recording this, I can only uh, work on 30 frames per second. Normally it's at 60. But here's a life hack for everyone. Trees, as soon as uh, they get rendered in the uh, simulator, uh, be aware each and every object that the computer has to render is something else it has to think about. So uh, when you put the trees on uh, high or ultra, there's going to be a lot of trees and a lot of things, items for your computer to think about. So I keep them at medium. And in some cases, in very forested areas, when I fly really low, I even set them to low. But for now, medium works. So the less 
uh, the computer has to think about those trees, the better it is for you. Then there's rolling cash. What is rolling cash? It's hitting, hiding under uh, data. Here you go, rolling cash settings. Uh, normally, the amount of rolling cache is set to just a few gigabytes. And I have uh, increased that to 16 gigabytes because I have the space. And as soon as you uh, load up a flight and actually fly it, uh, Flight Simulator 2020 will store the renderings locally, which means it doesn't have to download it, re-render it anymore because it is already there. Now, knowing all this, you have already taken care of most of the uh, uh, crashes you can endure while working on a low-spec computer. Now, I didn't make any changes, so this card, if you made any changes, make sure that you save them, of course. Now, let's load up a flight in the Cessna 172 G1000. Oh, rip my frame rates. As I'm in the Netherlands, let's go to the Netherlands. One of the airports that is usually uh, pretty uh, uh, easy when it comes to traffic. Is Eelde. Let's make this a short flight. Let's go to Lelystad. There we go. Loading the flight plan. We're going to go low altitude airways. And we're not going to go direct today. We want to be on the ILS. When we can zoom in right now, you can see that the ILS approach has been loaded as well. Very nice. Now let's make sure that we have a little bit of fuel, or at least enough. I'm flying alone today. Flight conditions, they are alive, but nothing to worry about. No, this is life. Let's get it right, all right? <laughs> Wants me to close. Let's do this. All right, here we are. Um, when we set up the flight plan, I didn't set the altitude. But for now, let's just pretend we did. 3,000 initially and 5,000 final. And just because uh, the ATC guys are constantly babbling, I'm going to change the frequency and make sure they stay out of this conversation. <coughs> Now, normally you would, of course, uh, start out with a, uh, a parking space. But for the purpose of uh, just showing you uh, this video, let's not. All right, here is our current altitude setting for when we want to use the autopilot. So 3000 is what we're going to do initially. The flight director well, we can put it on. It's basically just calculations of the computer showing uh, what it will start to do as soon as the autopilot has been activated. Current heading bug set dead north. If we click it, one, uh, when we click the, uh, the heading here, it'll jump to our current direction. I just pressed uh, D for Delta, uh, B for Bravo to uh, adjust the heading bug 
and the altimeter. More on that later. So as soon as we uh, release the parking brake, get going, uh, we're going to start straight out. Then we will engage the autopilot and we'll have a little talk about this section here. Vertical speed and flight level change. Let's get it into the air. Autopilot. Uh, speed brake off. A little bit more light. Hopefully makes for a bit better video. Now the outside air temperature is currently 1 degree cel Celsius. So it'll be freezing shortly. Put on the pedo heat and make sure we don't ice up. Right, let's get this puppy into the air. I'm using the uh, Logitech Freedom 2.4 as a yoke because I don't want to invest hundreds of dollars or euros or whatever your currency is into uh, full flight sim things but this one is incredibly sensitive you can barely move and there is a response a lot of side wind as well lot of side wind but we are airborne now just for the purpose of this uh, video we're going to engage the autopilot set nav so it will follow the uh, magenta line I guess you call it we're going to press FLC flight level change now you see that 80 has appeared up here we were flying 80 when I engaged the FLC. So now the airplane will be holding 80 knots until we've reached the altitude we have selected. Landing lights off. Everything else is on. Papa Hotel Bravo Victor Lima, that is the tail number I always fly with because that is one of the airplanes, uh, a actual Cessna 172 in which I have taken lessons. Now when you're climbing in a flight level change, you can use the uh, buttons up and down to increase the speed or decrease it. Normally when you're climbing 70 is enough. This is just demonstration purposes. You can also see uh, the angle of attack changing. Same goes for when I'm decreasing the speed. Of course, the flight director is right there with us, showing us what it wants to do. We're already at waypoint number one. Going to the second. past 2500 and if you look closely you will see that the airplane will start leveling off at 3000 
Notice here in the green letters, that is exactly the settings that uh, we have uh, just put in. The GPS is on, we're following the magenta line. Autopilot is on. The set altimeter is 3000. And, well, it just changed because we're approaching 3000 now. But before it said FLC and uh, 80 knots or something. See, we're leveling off. And that is my cordless yoke disengaging. Love when that happens. How are the flaps? Flaps are up, okay. Didn't check that. <laughs> Making another slight turn. Still pretty windy out there. need this little map because we've got a bigger one right here. Now the differences between this screen and this one, well basically this one only gives you a little bit of extra information about what the engine is doing. All the buttons and knobs are exactly the same left and right. Functions however are slightly different. For instance if we uh, press the flight plan over here It'll squeeze the map and show you the entire flight plan. This is about what we are going to do. On this side, if we press FL FPL for flight plan, it is just a very short little extra screen. So I usually just use this one. I think personally, uh, once you get used to it, it is also easier to uh, use this side for uh, the flight plan compared to over here. Now, as we are at 3000 feet right now, we're going to increase the altitude to 5000 and notice what happens. We have set 5000 right here, there is nothing changing over here because uh, we have not yet engaged uh, FLC or vertical speed. Well, we've seen a uh, uh, flight level change just now, so let's just use vertical speed right now and nose up. And the more times you click this uh, nose up thing, the faster it will climb. So right now we're going up 400 feet per minute in the altimeter setting. And the airplane is happily climbing to 5,000 feet. When we take a look at a uh, Grand Caravan, that is one of the airplanes that has a lot of trouble uh, for new pilots because uh, all these buttons are located up here in the Grand Caravan. If this video doesn't get too long I'll uh, load up the same flight we do right now and show you with the Grand Caravan. They are exactly the same, just the location is a little bit different so that both pilots uh, in the Grand Caravan can reach these buttons like uh, heading, altitude, flight level change, etc, etc. That is about all the difference there is.
I'm happy these are clouds and not mountains. Might be in big trouble. Something noteworthy, which happens in uh, real life aviation a lot. As soon as the airplane follows uh, the GPS to another waypoint, the heading bug stays in the same position. Pressing heading will set it back where it belongs. Looks like we're going just about sideways. Need to trim it a little bit or let the autopilot do it. There's a lot of wind. Now before I get any complaints about uh, the clouds being fuzzy, I'm also recording this and my frame rates are bad at the moment. Normally when I fly here uh, they're not uh, fuzzy at all, they're just uh, well the same as when you look outside and up or outside the window of an airplane. Still quite a few folks out here, if they're all doing real life weather. Uh, in this area, this morning it has been snowing, I'm from this area, so I should know. A lot of it has melted already. I think they're looking for a little bit more bad weather. Maybe next time I'm uh, recording a video like this, I'm putting a camera on the screen so I can uh, run in full FPS and a little bit more quality. Because that recording uh, program is taking up a lot of memory, space, graphics, you name it. Speaking of the graphics, that's another tweak that uh, can help some people but not everybody. Uh, if you check the BIOS settings of your uh, computer, and by all means uh, do not do that if you have no idea what you're doing, uh, sometimes you can engage the onboard uh, uh, graphics card of your computer, as well as the extra graphic cards you use for uh, Flight Simulator. So on my uh, uh, left screen, which you have seen earlier, uh, that is running on the onboard uh, graphics card of the computer itself. And Flight Simulator, of course, has a dedicated uh, screen and a dedicated uh, uh, graphics card. Now, why did I do this? Uh, well, I was not prepared to pay over 700 euros for a graphics card which could take Flight Simulator. So I took the minimum spec which is uh, one that has uh, four gigabytes of memory just to run Flight Simulator 2020. And because I'm running my other screen on uh, the onboard graphics card, there is absolutely no extra um, pulling, I guess that's how you call it, on uh, no extra work for the uh, extra graphics card. By the way, let me know in the comments if there's uh, anything specific uh, you guys want to uh, know about uh, the, the tweaks. Uh, about handling a Jeep 1000, about real life aviation versus uh, 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 sim aviation. Just anything goes, just let me know.
let's check the flight plan. How are we looking? With the range here, we can uh, zoom in and zoom out. And when we uh, toggle the uh, uh, the, uh, the map pointer, we can also use the arrows to move the map in any direction that we want. Let's not do that right now. Five nautical miles, 5.4 till the next waypoint. After which we will uh, get a nice turn. We should be just about above my home train right now, and uh, when I look up, the clouds are very correct. It's uh, just like this. In one of the next videos I'm going to also uh, talk about uh, the NAV system, how to find your way in the G1000. Like, comment and subscribe if you uh, want to hear more about uh, the basics of uh, G1000 or when you have specific questions, you're very welcome to uh, ask them in the comments below and I'll make sure that you get a proper answer and don't have a video of about, uh, well, an hour, two hours, three hours and still not get the answers that you uh, want because I'm going straight to the point. And here we go, because we have selected an ILS at the flight plan, we now have an extra strip here, and this will indicate our glide path. If all goes well and the GPS doesn't mess up again, you will start to see that uh, our altitude will start to go down by itself. And if it doesn't go the way I planned it, 
or the autopilot doesn't uh, understand me yet well easy I'll just land this puppy myself but in theory after the next corner we should start uh, on our descent And our magenta line has vanished. It is now the green one. And the green one is aligned with the ILS. That basically is exactly what you want to happen. Press heading, should anything happen. And we go of course again then we can override the uh, current settings by pressing heading and maintain our flight path things are looking good so far our thing is looking in distance Very nice. Autopilot is off. Throttle off because Lelystad are uh, our destination is just right there and we did not go down so we did not pick up the glide slope properly. Engine to idle and let's get down in a hurry. To be fair, if you uh, spend a little bit more time planning the entire flight, uh, the altitude, when to descend, everything, that all goes automatically, but for the purpose of the flight I have chosen to just skip a few steps. If you uh, want to see things done correctly, like, comment, subscribe and state a question. And then we can. 
I'm hoping the cloud layer is not too low so we can see things. There we go, there's the wrong way. Actually, not your flaps. Let's get this aligned. Bit. Yeah, yeah, I know. And hopefully not too much of side wind. I mean, did you guys notice? Still no CTDs. By the way, in real life, we would be overflying the farm of a very angry man right now. He hates airplanes above his cows. And there's someone on the runway. What is he uh, doing? He's idling. I'm overtaking him. In real life, you don't do that. People will be very cross with you. And there's the overly sensitive rudders again. Bit of braking. Let's get off right here. So if the other guy wants to take off, he can. Flaps back up, stay on the runway, the taxiway. And I'm thinking this building here provides a perfect parking spot. Now, has this been all done by aviation rules? No, it has not. We've just been on a bit of a training, hopefully explaining uh, to the people with other low-end machines how you can actually stay airborne without uh, CTDs. And a little bit about the navigation just a little bit so i hope you enjoyed this and let me know what you think in the comments tell me all about uh, what you run into so that i, I can uh, make a video about that and hopefully sort out your problems well that is it for now let's shut the puppy down see you next time folks